One of the main benefits of icon art is that you can hold very fine details that would be almost impossible with a mylar or vinyl stencil. We have a mesh embedded in our stencil film that holds all the teeny tiny little bits in place so you can get very detailed stencils, which is perfect when you want to create a distressed look. Today I'm going to be showing you how to distress any artwork you like using Inkscape, but this of course can be applied to any design program that you prefer to use. This is especially great if you like to make chalkboard signs or larger signs and give it a kind of weathered look. It's also really great if you want to make vintage t-shirts or it also works on something as small as mugs, glasses, tumblers, really anything that you want to stencil. You can add a distressed look to your artwork and get a really interesting look. So let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do is get your distressed patterns. We have a couple uploaded on our website and our free artwork section. You can download them right from there or there is lots of distressed patterns online. You can either purchase an SVG file or find distressed patterns. So I'm just going to use the one we have on our website. So I just go to our website and go to resources, free artwork, and then you will see this distressed pattern. And I included three different patterns on this SVG. So you'll just choose the pattern that you want that for the look that you're going for. So I'm just going to scroll down and click download SVG and it'll open in a new window and just right click and save as, and I'll just save it to my desktop. So then I'll just minimize that and then it's on my desktop ready to be used. So I'm just gonna open Inkscape and I hit my Z button to get my zoom tool and then I'm just going to select this zoom to fit page in window and then that changes my artboard to be the size of my window. So I'm going to go to file document properties. I always start this way. I just want to make sure that my file is set up as US letter eight and a half by 11 because that is the size that I'm going to be printing on. So and then I'm just going to use display units inches and that's it. So now I have an eight and a half by 11 document ready to go. So now I'm just going to open the files that I want to do the distressing on. So I'm just gonna show you how to do some simple text or um, like the shamrock that we uploaded for our free uh, St. Patty's Day artwork. I'll show you how I did that one. But you can do this with any artwork you want, basically. <laughs> So I'm just gonna open that shamrock and copy it and paste it onto the document that I just set up. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. So when you scale artwork, if you select this little lock button right here and then you scale it, it'll keep it in proportion. If you don't have that clicked and you try to scale it, it will distort it. You can also hold down your control key and that will also lock it into proportion. All right, so now I have my shamrock and now I just need to get my distress pattern. So I'm just gonna to go to file, open, and I'll open the distress patterns SVG that I saved to my desktop. So this file is a very large file. There's a lot going on because each one of these dots is a piece of art. If you go to view display mode outline, you will see that each one of those little black dots is an individual piece of line art. So when you are opening it, if it takes a little bit or you see the spinning wheel for a little bit, that's fine. Um, it, the computer is just thinking because this is such a large complex file. All right. So basically you're just gonna select the one that you want. I think for the shamrock, I'm gonna use this one. So you just select it and it's all one piece of art right now and copy it. And then I'm gonna go to my other window where the shamrock was and paste it. And then you can scale it again to be the size that you want. I'm gonna make it a little bigger to cover the whole thing. And then all you do is change the color to white. So I'm down here in my bar and I'm gonna choose the white color right here. So now that adds the distressing. So you can kind of move it around 
it's just on top of that black artwork so you can sort of move it around to see you know what how you want the distressing to look if you have your artwork selected and you click it again you'll see this little arrow in the side change to a rotating arrow instead of a transform arrow so once you have that rotating arrow if you want you can rotate your artwork so basically you just want to you know move around that piece of artwork whoops until you have the look that you want and you can do the same thing with text so all you would do is just you know type your text and then select the font that you want to use so we'll just use something like Cocoa Goose, and then you can you know make it the size you want. You can also use the transform palette up here. So say you're putting on a shirt and you know you want it to be you know five inches, you can just type that in right there, six inches, whatever. And then again, you would do the same thing. You can you know use the same distress pattern. We'll grab one of the other ones and see what it looks like. So again, I'm just opening up my Distressed Patterns SVG file. And for this one, I'm gonna try this bottom one. So again, I'm just going to select the artwork that I want, right click, copy, and then I'm going to paste it, just right click, paste. Turn it white and then scale it, you know, how I want it to look. So if you want more distressing, you would use, you know, that part of the artwork that's the most distressed. If you want a little bit less, you basically just kind of adjust it, scale it until it looks the way you want it to look. I think for this one, we'll do maybe something like, that looks good. So if you're trying to place a lot of artwork on one page together and you're using different distressing patterns. As you can see right now, this distressing pattern, you know, I'll just change the color just for, so you can see the look of it, goes all the way, so this distressing pattern is all the way up here. So if I would want to, you know, put these two pieces of artwork closer together, you know, they would overlap each other. So in order to avoid that, I can make a clipping mask. So I can basically mask off this, this distress pattern so it doesn't overlap into my pattern up here. So in order to do that, and again, I'm just keeping this green so you can visually see it. In order to do that, you would create a box that you wanna kind of put the artwork inside of. And we'll just make that box pink. And you just put it where you want the, the distressed artwork to actually be. And then you select both pieces of art so that art, the, your box is on top of your distress pattern. And then you shift select. So now both are selected. The box is selected. You can see the dotted line around it. And the pattern is also selected. So after you have them both selected, you'll just go to object, clip, set. And now you can see the pattern only covers the area of the artwork that you want and it's not overlapping into the shamrock. So I'll just select that green and turn it white. And there you go. That is how you make your artwork look distressed. And I'll also show it on the hot cocoa sign that I uploaded also to our website. I can show you how I did that one as well. So you can do you know more than just basic artwork like this. So I'm just going to open that hot cocoa sign that I designed. So this is just plain text all set in here. And if I want to distress it, I'm just going to go ahead and open that distress patterns. So I included this very fine, as you can see, this SVG has very, very fine details. And I included that on here. If you just printed it as is, a lot of these might not hold on the stencil, but I included it so that if you wanted to scale it up to be an 11 by 17 distress, that the distressing isn't too big and clunky. So I'm just gonna copy that 
and then go back into my hot cocoa bar sign and paste it. And you can see that's really small, but when you scale it up, I'm just gonna put it in the corner here and scale it. And then turn it white. Now you can see if I zoom in here, your distressing details are nice and small. Where if you would have used one of the other distress patterns and scaled it up, the distressing would have been very, like say you would take this one and scale it to be really large. These would be very chunky and large distressing. So if you want a finer distressing, you would use this pattern. Say you zoom in on this R and it's not exactly how you want it to look. You can always select your direct select tool over here. If you hover over it, it says edit paths by nodes. And then you can select each one of these pieces individually. So say you didn't like how that looked there, you can just select it and delete it and then you know you can basically edit the entire distressed artwork individually as well so that is how you get distressed artwork if you want to do distressing yourself we uploaded those patterns to our website so enjoy